Welcome back to the channel. My name is Gary. And my name is Logan. And today we're going to do some of the most bizarre jobs throughout history. Okay. So like through whole history or like the dirty jobs? Actually, man, job? I've, I've got from like the Han Dynasty in China, the Middle Ages, the 18th, 19th century, the, oh. uh, medieval, okay. uh, the Roman Empire. I've got it all. Oh, on. Roman Empire. Okay. Yeah. Was that in Greece with where all like the blonde twinks and stuff would like? Okay. But is any of uh, whatever that show dirty jobs? Is any of those gonna be on here? Yeah, they, they, he really needs to try out some medieval jobs. That would just be insane to watch. I'd like to see Executioner, personally. Okay. <laughs> First one on the list is Gong Farmer. It's from medieval Europe during the Middle Ages. Is there a way to cultivate something with sound? A Gong Farmer is a worker who cleans out cesspits and privies. Why would they call that a gong farmer? What are you farming? Yeah, that's not a job I would like to have. No, it is not. Not, no. Wait, hold up. You say they collect the shit. Is, it, is that to they, like they make just go manure? Clean it like make manure for farms? No, they, they go collect it and then they throw it in the river if, that they all have to drink out of. If you squeegee a brothel, would you be able to make some like super soldier apple trees or something? Grow some tobacco. <laughs> have a little humunculus. The next one is a royal rat catcher. It's from Victoria, England in the 19th century. I mean, that leaves little to the imagination. I'm gonna guess that it's just, um, I don't know. I would assume the three blind mice were probably a pretty popular, like, fairy tale back in the day. Yeah. So I'd assume that, like, every king would have, like, a, you know, their own three blind mice that they have this royal rat catcher, like, oh, damn, they got out again. Your job for the day is to go out and find them. Could a cat be a royal cat, I mean, rat catcher? I would assume it could. I would love to see a, a, a cat in a, in a suit of chain mail. I think that'd be quite... Did they have chain mail in Victorian era? No. Oh. What did they even have then? Were they just raw dog and clothes? Did they have clothes yet? Yeah. Okay. I guess, I don't know, just a burlap sack. Is Hope it? the rat doesn't give you the plague. Now, a lot of these you are going to be able to guess right mm -hmm. off the bat, so it's not really a guessing thing. Yeah. It's like, I just want your opinion on what you think they do. So the next one is a leech collector from the 18th and 19th century in Europe. I do know that they used to use uh, leeches in medical practices. Yep. I would hate to be a leech catcher. Yeah. You don't need to worry about catching leeches. You need to worry about a leech catching your ass. That's what they do. They just go out there in the swamp and they just wait around with their... Oh my and God. And let all the leeches get on them and then they would take the leeches back and let the doctor put them on people. Is there going to be a tick farmer somewhere else on, on this list? No. No? No, no tick no. farmers? Ticks have never been a critter we like to associate with. Right on cue. The next one actually has a really cool name. It's called a Sin Eater. A Sin Eater? Yes, sir. It is from medieval England in the okay. Middle Ages. I knew it was, uh, had something to do with the Catholic Church. So, you know, at the confessionals, you can confess to whatever you want, and it's just like, hey, you know, you are absolved of all. You know, like, most people, every other day, they have to go to the damn confession booth and confess to, like, 12 different times that they've masturbated since last doing the confessional. Yep. So I think a sin eater is a priest that eats the sins fresh after they were committed. That's the best way I could have worded it without cutting out the entire bit. No? No? No. Sin eater is a person hired to eat over top of a dead body to absolve it of sins. <laughs> okay, okay. It, this was a popular practice in Victorian era England. Yeah, they they believed that if you ate bread over top of a dead person, the bread would have absorbed their sins. The body of Christ type deal. Mm, okay. And it would absorb the sins, and then they would eat it. Then the person who's dead would be able to go to purgatory. Okay, so that's kind of a good thing to to do. Then that would mean you're a good person if you were to. Uh, be a sin eater. I actually did something similar. I went to McDonald's and I was waiting on my order and then uh, two people were getting upset at each other. So, you know, push came to shove. 
Uh, one was on the ground. I didn't know if he was alive, but they called my order and I stepped over him. He's not gonna have the teeth to chew this. I'm just gonna take this for him. The next one is a gong scaler. Oh, back with the wait, gong. Wait, 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 wait. This is from ancient China in the okay. Han Dynasty. Okay, so this, okay. Th surely this would mean... Actual uh, gongs? Mm-hmm. Yes. Ooh, hold up. Is it, you know how you see like the church bells that are like massive and they have these massive ropes that you got to like jump and like swing to like pull down? Is it like that? No. No. No, gongs get hit by big sticks. Oh. Well, I mean, if you put like a bunch of gongs next to each other, it'd kind of be like wind chimes. That would be a scary pair of wind chimes. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, it would. It'd be some bass. <laughs> Um, you, I don't no, know. No, a gong scale is somebody that they, they hired to, to climb up very large gongs and clean them. Wait, no, bronze doesn't, uh, oxidize, does it? Copper does? Copper does. Oh, yes. Copper and lead do. I don't, I don't know. I don't think bronze does. I'm not Maybe sure not. on that. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a scientist, of course. We're scientists. Yeah. I'm like, uh, I'm a juggalo. Magnets. How do those work? The next one is a lamp lighter. It's from the 19th and 20th century cities. And they know wizard magic. <laughs> That's what uh, Dumbledore was, or was it Gandalf the Great? That, wait, no. Wait, Darth Vader? No. It was Dumbledore. Yeah, I think it was Dumbledore that was lighting the, the street uh, things in Harry Potter. I've never seen Harry Potter. Oh. Well, you're not missing much. So it pretty much just took a big stick with a flame on it. And oh, and yeah. just Lit all the little street lights. Well, I mean, that's what Gand. I actually said that's what Dumbledore did, except his stick was tiny and it had magic. Oh, so it just like mm. yeah, it just goes to show that size doesn't matter. If you got the magic, he got the magic. Doesn't matter what size stick you got. I mean, Gandalf came out with a staff though. I bet he's straight slanging. Speaking of huge st staffs. Oh, oh no. The next one is a knocker up. It's Victorian England from the 19th century. Do you know what this is? Um, human breeding, I would imagine. No, there was somebody back in the day who used to walk around people's apartments and, and tap on the windows or oh. shoot peas at them to wake them up before the alarm clock was invented. Yep, I have heard of those actually. Yeah. But why would they call them that? I don't know, I guess because they knock on your window that was usually on the second floor. Well then why would, oh, because they did use a long stick to tap on the windows. I thought you were pulling a fast one on me, but I have heard of that job. Not one I'd really like to have. You gotta be up before everybody else, on time. Well, I mean, then Are again Are you gonna though, wake up, how are, how's the knocker upper gonna wake up when there's no alarm clocks? Before I'm, it's time to wake everybody else up. I would assume that there's a night shift. So it's the early 19th century, man. Everybody's drunk. I mean, he's gonna be passed out, but he's mm -hmm. gonna wake up at three o'clock in the morning. Come on, that shit ain't happening. Yeah, th to be fair, what else are you gonna do after you woke everyone up? Go like, to sleep. <laughs> yeah, just go back to sleep. You, you know. just slam a fifth and then pass out for the rest of the day. There you go. A wagon wheel counter. Yeah, a wagon wheel counter. Is this one of those, uh, you know how, you know when you go to Walmart and you see the Walmart greeters and you're like, respect for getting out there and, and working a job. Is that what, jobs they gave to those people back in the day. Like every wagon that comes through here, I want you to count the wheels on them. Four, 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 four. Is it like that? You're not far off, man. It's somebody who was paid to count the wheels that came into town for tax purposes. Oh, wheels. So like, uh, like the sale of wheels, not actual carts and stuff. No, wagon wheels. Like all the wagons coming in into town. Oh, so you actually have to tax each wheel on a wagon. Well, no, they tax the number of wagons. Oh, you know that some asshole was building like one wheeled wagons, and that's like lost technology to us now. I would like to see the the trader that comes in on a unicycle though. I'd buy anything they had. I'd buy their magic beans. The last one is a whipping boy. You know, I've gotten paid for something similar, actually. Have you? Yes. Okay. Actually, I did it for free once. The first time we met, actually. Kinda did, yeah. And I'm not gonna go into detail either. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> No, a whipping, a whipping boy is someone that's hired by European royalty in the Renaissance. Mm -hmm. Whenever, like, the prince or something did something bad, the whipping boy would take their place to get beat. Oh, my God. But they would make them be really good friends, so the prince would have to watch his friend get beat over oh, some stupid stuff he did. Damn. Man, my whipping boy would hate me. You know, we'd be playing 
you know, Mario Kart, it's late at night, you know, all the candles are supposed to be off, but we got one. And then I lose my shit and chuck it at the stone wall. And then the king comes in and be like, nah, 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 nah. This ain't how this happens. He takes his king belt off and lays my friend over his lap and... Well, Logan, that's it for this video. I appreciate you giving me a lot of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Career opportunities that I may choose from now. Actually, uh, uh, we will have more career opportunities to choose from coming up. Okay, I'm hoping that there's going to be a few that I can actually hopefully read a book on and learn how to do it. Because it seems like a lot of these are like lost art forms, you know what I mean? Like the gong farmer? Yeah, the gong, f well, okay, I mean... I bet a lot of people do gong farming in their spare time. Just uh, they, 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 That's still a thing now. It's just not called that. Yeah, no, I, I sanitation workers. I, there's like a big grate where all the tampons and baby wipes get collected at. And then you got to, yeah, they squeegee that out, apparently. Then you got the guy that cleans up the adult movie theaters. I have to say, though, I think that's like um opportunity that we're not taking advantage of. Like... Uh, like old cum is gonna be like the next Bitcoin. Cause apparently it's got like a crazy amount of data in each one. There's like a quintillion terabytes or something. Okay, yeah. So, may maybe. Maybe. That's it for this video. We'll see you next time. Yes, we shall.